Good evening, folks, and welcome to the 6 o'clock news on SBYnews.com. This is our special edition where we're interviewing the different candidates for all different kinds of positions within the county, state. With me today is my old friend, Mr. Jim Mathias. Absolutely. Hey, good guy. We're doing good. Good. Listen, let's get right into this so we can hammer these down and maybe have some spare time at the end to talk a little bit about your local politics. Why are you running? Well, my whole life I've always served people since I've been a kid. When we came into Ocean City with our dad, we were in business, we were in business over 30 years, and I got involved in the community. Got involved in campaigns, joined the Ocean City Volunteer Fire Company, and for over 20 years uh, we gave service to the community. Allowed that opportunity to go forward the citizens of Ocean City enabled me to serve as a council member, then the mayor. Uh, God bless Ben, he passed away. Uh, we were appointed, elected. And now the good senators represented this district uh, is retiring. Mm -hmm. And there's an opportunity to continue to serve and to reach out to serve our citizens, not only in Worcester, my Conoco, but down in Somerset. Uh, the Senate is a more conservative body and certainly suits my politics uh, better as we go along. So we're looking forward. We're out there and uh, working hard, looking to meet people. And uh, even in very difficult times, I think as we go forward, we'll see how uh, we've been able to continue to serve and do good things. Good deal. Now, why are you over your opponent? Well, let's talk about this first. Now, the most important thing I'd like to say today is I'd like to ask the, your viewers and your readers and your listeners uh, to become acquainted with all the candidates. Mm -hmm. That's really what we do between now and the primary, right, right now and the general. And uh, I think what they'll find is that Jim is a person who's built a record, a record of trust, a record of confidence. Uh, we were saying in this campaign, always working for you record of great constituency service. Mm -hmm. And Jim's a person that you've always been able to approach. Yeah, that's uh, true. And Jim's just like all of us. Uh, Jim's married, he has children, he owns a home, he makes a mortgage, he's owned a business for over 30 years. Uh, he's an employee. He works. He understands the stresses that are out there today and has been able to work through. And most importantly, when you have an issue, you can able to reach out to Jim, and Jim has been there. And I think that's really what we need today. This is about the person. This is about being able to work for the Eastern Shore, to be able to work for Maryland, and to be able to come back home for the things that we need. Good. Okay. Under the current administration, Maryland taxpayers received the largest tax increase in history. How do you believe that the governor and the legislature should attack Maryland's current fiscal situation and be as specific as you can? Sure. Well, let's take it a little bit at a time. I mean, when we read the question, it's almost like coming in in the middle of a movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's, let's start at the beginning of the movie. There's a thousand set of fingerprints on how we in our state and we in this country got to where we are. And uh, when Bennett passed away, I got appointed and then I got elected. The first thing we attempted to do was to be able to go ahead and mediate to remedy the structural deficit. Uh, we went on for years with a billion, approaching a $2 billion structural deficit. And in the special session of 2007, in the advent of this economic turn, downturn that we're in, we went ahead and put together a financial equation that we thought could yield the revenue that our state needed for education, for public safety, for health. That's what we thought we did. You know, some of those things I didn't vote for, though. I didn't vote for the sales tax increase. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that, that was right as close as we are bumped up towards Delaware, as competitive as business is today. Again, you know, they brought forward another dollar increase in the cigarette tax. I didn't vote for that because we had voted in the previous session to take cigarette smoking out of ours. A significant cultural change that was necessary. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think going back to that same low place was right. They proposed an IT tax. A rural growth area in our state was uh, information technology and to, to tax the services. That wasn't right, So, in my opinion. So when we went out, we did some corporate reform. We did personal reform. That for the average income earner, actually reduced their taxes by a little bit. Mm -hmm. so, when we went ahead and put that package together in the House and sent that package over to the Senate, when the Senate package came back with one bill, voted against all of them. So, you know, what we attempted to do and what our idea was to remediate that structural deficit. We didn't anticipate the deficit of this economic downturn. As we've gone forward in this administration, we've got almost $6 billion. $6 billion. As we just started fiscal year 2011, our general fund budget is lower than fiscal year 2007. And what have we been able to do? It, American Education voted Maryland's education system the best in the country two years ago. We got the best 
shock trauma hospital in the world, research hospital. When we look around, James had been in high school, Salisbury University, Warwick Community College. When we look at the capital projects that we have been able to continue to render forward in this difficult time, I think that we have been able to sustain our goodness and our future here at least for sure in Maryland. Good. Okay. If elected, will you support the repeal of both the sales tax increase and the so-called millionaire sur surtax? Forgive me. If so, how would you pay for it? Well, here's where we'll go from there. Uh, I did not vote, as I already said, for the sales tax increase. I didn't think it was good for us in terms of our competitive nature. Certainly, I'm not married to that, but let me say this. It has rendered forward revenue at this time. We have seen the most significant economic downturn in our country since the Great Depression. And certainly, as protected as Maryland been because of the federal jobs that are here with Washington, D.C., we've been able to hold ourselves up better than most. But uh, if, in fact, the day comes back, and we'll come back by growing jobs. I already talked a little bit about some of the development around in our area. And what used to be Dresser is now Salisbury University. What used to be Campbell Soup is now Woolworth we'll Community College. But as we continue to identify our future growth, technology, nanotech, you look at the tech belt that's up in Baltimore County, you look at the port, you look at GM building the new engines here, when you look at hardware, when you look at uh, Notech up at the, on the north end of uh, Salisbury, uh, or North Salisbury, these are the things that we have to do. When we come back to economic vitality, I will look very closely perhaps at the you know, tax uh, right now. We have to have it. Our infrastructure is failing, as you all know, with the less sales of gasoline and the less gasoline tax, with the less transfer of new automobiles, there's been less transfer tax. Our roads are suffering. We have to make sure the money that we have right now is not enough just to maintain our infrastructure. So I can't tell you that we'll go back to repeal that tax, but I can tell you I'll go back to avidly grow our economy to make sure that that growth can supplant or perhaps replace that tax. The millionaire's tax, that's going to sunset in December 31st. That was a short-term gap uh, to anticipate what we were going through with the special structural deficit, and that tax will sunset December 31st, 2010, and I will not vote to carry it forward. I will vote against carrying it forward. Okay. Under the current administration, we've seen great effort for the, by the state to force Wacopoli County to strip farmers of their property rights by taking away many of their development rights. Do you support this? If not, will you commit, if elected, to support legislation to get the state government out of local planning decisions and, if need be, eliminate the Maryland Department of Planning? That was a mouthful. What did that mean? <laughs> I, I can tell you, that, that was something I have to learn more about, I'll be honest. And, okay. uh, one thing I've attempted to do in my years of public service is when I don't know uh, the answer, rather than sit here and try and make up one, but what I think is, is that the uh, Ag Preservation I talked to some folks uh, about this over the several months. And what I think that they did, and you may be getting at this, is they decertified a Wicomico County uh, receiving certain uh, funding to come down because of their cluster development. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, if I got that right, uh, their cluster development, in my mind's eye, uh, was good. It certainly mimicked, on a small scale, a smart growth. Mm -hmm. And I think smart growth is good. It's just cluster development. Mm -hmm. It keeps development where it is and allows open space to be there, especially open space in our area that is used for ag, which is a critical, that number one industry in Maryland. Mm -hmm. So uh, while uh, that happened, I'm uh, learning more about it. I'm uh, very concerned about it. But on the other hand, with uh, this administration, what we've had is the largest amount of appropriation from the rural legacy funding that has been able to buy development rights to keep that land. I will pledge to you to be a strong, strong support for agriculture, for poultry, and for the space and the best of my ability and protecting these property rights. Very good. we got to do this kind of quick. We're running out of time here. So in your opinion, what are the greatest challenges facing the lower shore, and how do you believe that you can help solve the problems of the electric? Keeping our families here. When you look at the legacy name for the eastern shore, we want to make sure that the job base is to keep them. We're educating them and keeping them healthy re-educating them, we want to keep them safe, keep them here with an opportunity. One day, uh, 50 years from now, I want to hear the Alberta name. I want to be able to hear the name of Hopkins and the name of 
finds in the name of Judas. Just like we hear some of those names that are Purdue named today. Mm -hmm. That's named. And educating our children here and having them have to go elsewhere to find jobs and find opportunity. We've only done half our job. I would 